the fuck are you? I love how you can see your t-shirt under there. <laughs> don't, we don't talk about this story. Croiso friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where we go camping. All of us. Even the tornado. Last March, Tornado told me that they wanted to come to Gulf Wars with us and not be left behind at home. Going to a week-long event is a big commitment, so we've been working up to it a bit at a time. The next step was to camp for three days at the War of the Rams, which took place last weekend. And as much as I complain about how hot it is most of the time in Texas, because it is, by mid-November the nights at least get pretty chilly and sometimes the days too. So that means that Tornado is going to need some cooler weather clothing to keep cozy. Now, normally my inclination would be to make something from wool, but due to sensory needs, I'm going to be working with cotton flannel instead. Because Tornado likes to wear both masculine and feminine clothing, I'm opting for a long, rectangularly constructed tunic of the sort that would be worn both by men and women in the medieval era, and can be worn with other layers for extra warmth. So everyone, go grab your cuppa. Today I am drinking... Fairy Tale Teas Once Upon a Time, which is a delightfully rich black tea with hazelnut and vanilla and added pixie dust. I think we all deserve a little whimsy in these days that can seem very dark. Let's get into it. I have this piece of cotton flannel that I had originally intended to be the lining for the Ikea dressing gown I made last year, but never ended up using it partially because I didn't have enough length for the sleeves and partially because I didn't really want a cold weather gown in Texas. I am taking the easy way out for this tunic and cutting body and sleeves in one piece. It's a lot quicker to cut and sew and I'm on a bit of a time crunch and anyway the fabric is already cut that way because of the dressing gown. I'm using another tunic that I know fits Tornado with a bit of room to spare, nothing like kids wearing clothes for a month before outgrowing them, as a template. I know the sleeve still won't be quite long enough, but I have a plan for that. I always double check against a Google Doc that has Tornado's partners and my measurements. I update it about once a quarter to make sure everything is correct. This allows me to sew for them when they aren't in the same house as me. The width of the tunic will be the width of the fabric, no extra gores included, and the length gives me just enough extra for my sleeve lengthening plan. I've cut extra length from the remaining fabric and will cover that seam with trim of some kind. Adding that length will be the first step. I couldn't find my old keyhole neck facing for Tornado's tunic, so I used an outgrown tunic to redact a new one. 
I placed a piece of paper on the inside of the old tunic so it was situated up against the shoulder seam and traced the neckline and slit. If I was smart, I'd have folded the paper so I could skip the next step. Next, I cut out the front and back neckline so I can lay it out and form a complete ovoid and cut places to mark the top and bottom of the slit. On a new piece of paper, I like craft paper for this since it's dirty, I'll trace out the shoulder seam lines and the neckline. Since the old tunic was on the too small side, I'm going to enlarge the ovoid by about a quarter of an inch all the way around and lengthen the slit by about the same. I'm making the width of the facing 2.5 inches, including half inch seam allowance. The inner ovoid is the stitching line, so I don't have to factor in a seam allowance there. The facing lines will extend about three quarters of an inch below the end of the slit, otherwise the angled lines at the bottom will look too thin. Just to make sure that everything is properly symmetrical, I'm going to fold the facing in half along the slit line before cutting everything out. Next, I treat the facing as I normally would. I'll cut and mark the pattern on the gorgeous burgundy colored flannel I got to go with the gray and cut it out, leaving a bit extra, leaving a bit of extra fabric to prevent fraying. After that, I need to mark the shoulder line and the line of vertical symmetry on the tunic so I know where to place the facing. Since this is going to be a decorative facing on the outside, I'll place the fabric facing on the wrong side of the tunic so it will flip outward. I always pin and sew along the marked neckline before cutting away the excess fabric inside. This keeps everything nice and stable while I sew and I don't have to try to remember whether the marked line is a cutting line or a seam allowance line. Once the facing is sewn into place, I can trim away the inside of the neckline and clip the curve. I forgot to film all of the ironing for this video, but the next step is to flip the facing right side out and press.
Next, I'll cut away the excess fabric on the outside of the facing and mark a half inch seam allowance. I'm just making dots because I'm using a gel pen and I don't want a solid line to be visible. Then I will notch the outside curve of the facing before folding it under and filling it into place. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members, especially my newest members, Rebecca and Shanna. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break for tunic construction and finishing touches. Sewing up the sides of the tunic is easy as pie since I'm not bothering with underarm gussets. I did curve the side seam under the arm though to create a little space for movement. And again, I forgot to film it, but I searched the side seams to prevent fraying. I'm making trim to cover the arm seams from the same flannel as the facing. I cut two two and a half inch strips and folded the sides in by about half an inch and pressed them. Then it was time to fell them into place along the sleeves. I could have top stitched them, but hand finishing is relaxing for me and I prefer the way it looks. With that done, all that's left is to hem the sleeves and bottom of the tunic.
Thank you for joining me today. Despite the nearly freezing temperatures, we had so much fun camping at War of the Rams. I feel like it's super important to involve kids in our recreation activities and let them find their own place within them. And thank you to everyone for 8,000 subscribers. I am perpetually blown away by that number, which keeps getting higher and higher. I am so grateful for all of you. And because I've gotten a couple of inquiries from people, I have gotten myself a PO box. I will put the address on the screen here and also in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell if you like taking your chances with YouTube notifications. If you're interested in finding me on social media, I am at Opus LNI everywhere and the links will all be in the description box. I will also post a link to my Ko-fi where you can leave a one-time tip, browse my web shop, or join my membership tiers for additional content and a personal thank you of your very own in my next video. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Well.